from both. Goes out wide with the first serve. Sabalenka, backhand behind. Forehand Sabalenka, just over that. Forehand Shabur, moving Sabalenka around. Backhand looped up. Backhand wide from Shabur. 40 30. Nervy, nervy, nervy. I mean, she she just wanted Sabalenka to, to make a mistake, I think, on that point. She's, way, she's, she's playing for the Sabalenka run forced error. And then the minute she tried to go for the backhand, it was tight and dragged out wide. And the crowd are, the crowd are applauding. Her her coach is trying to lift her up. One more match point. She's done it with, with an ace! It's an ace! It's an ace! And Shabur has just made a Wimbledon final for the second year in a row. Ladies and gentlemen, what a comeback. What a player. On Shabur, the hero of the Arab world. I couldn't be happier. The Wimbledon the final. I couldn't be happier. Tennis couldn't be happier. Oh, it's going to be overjoyed right now. I, I think I have to leave. Nick, see you soon. And just click see you, mate. Up when you see you, John. Around. It's been great fun. Joa is pounding the court. She loves centre court. This is one of the great romances in her life. Six seven six four six three. It was a tighter deciding set than the Rabakina one, which she won six one. She was in less control of that, but she was the better player that match. What an incredible performance from Ons Jabeur. Is this the match of the tournament? I think it might be. What a level. Tennis Twit, we were talking, I, I raised it at 4-2 down. Like, if Sabalenka loses this match, does she have a semi-final problem? Um, and John doesn't think so. We're going to pose it to Miles when he comes. But, Wow. Um, in that third set, this is the stats on Shabur 70. They were both 71% first serve points won. On Shabur was much tighter behind the second, 82% to Sabalenka's 30. On at Sabalenka hit 12 winners and 14 unforced errors. On Shabur hit six winners and three unforced errors, 33 to 26. That is just the third set. The quality was brilliant. Let's have a look at the overall match. Four, 27 winners from Shabur, 39 winners from Sabalenka, 14 unforced errors from Shabur, 45 from Sabalenka. Their first serves were firing, but Sabalenka was vulnerable on the return. The Shabur return was piercing through everything Sabalenka was throwing at her, and the Sabalenka errors crept in and kept going up and up and up and that's what happened during that match Sabalenka went big it was go big or go home and sadly she's ended up at home for Sabalenka a chance at world number one missed Iga Svantec will hold on to that just a little longer I think she will lose it after the US Open maybe even before because it's really tight between them But yeah, oh my word. By the way, um, congratulations to Hanya, who has just won the popcorn um, tennis uh, sort of pool, if you like, the, the league, predictions league, because she believed, she predicted on Shabur to win the title and her draw has panned out much more accurately than anyone else is on the team. Shabur's not won yet. But even if she doesn't, Hanya, Hanya called it better um, overall across the draw. Jabez giving an on-court interview now and she looks very emotional. Um, yeah. Wow. Um, what, what a match. Um, Thanks, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed that match. It was probably one of the most exciting commentaries I've ever done. Um, the energy was incredible. Um, and that match did not... I was kind of starting to think Sabalenka was going to get that set. And I think if the unforced errors hadn't crept in, if she'd maintained that level, I think she could have done. But on Shabur, on Shabur is playing unbelievable tennis right now i think this draw that she's had this year is tougher than the one she had last year one more match left 
She's into another Wimbledon final and she's into another Wimbledon final where she's the favourite. No discredit to Marketa von Drusheva. Um, I think she can give on to run for her money tomorrow. I have a lot more... I am, I'm a lot more wary of writing von Drusheva off today than I was earlier. But I don't think... Uh, that on Shabur is, uh, um, I, th I think on has learned, I think she's writing some wrongs this Wimbledon. But then I thought fate had Svitolina in the final. And I'm not always the best reader of fate. Will the stars align for on Shabur or Mokata von Drusheva steal a first major title? as she's stolen her way through because she's come out and taken it. She went out today against Denise Svitolina and took it. Ons Shabur has come from a set down against three Grand Slam champions. Not only that, she dominated a fourth against Patrick Kvitova. She was by far, by far the better player. In that match. And there were doubts. I did have some doubts about Sabalenka. I did think maybe some cracks would start appearing in that game of hers. Um, full credit to Anne Chabert. Full credit. Um, right. I think rather than hear me monologuing about this match. Let's have a conversation about this match. Let's get tuned in on this match and listen to the thoughts of Miles David. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that entrance? I did. I did. I did. I really appreciate it. I'm glad we can get tuned in together and talk some tennis. Yes, here we go. Mixing some brands. Here we go. Guys, don't go anywhere. Miles and I are going to be chatting about both semi-finals, but I think there's one semi-final that we both want to talk about just a little bit more. Um, I've just shared my thoughts in a kind of a little bit of a monologue on how I thought that match went. Um, maybe a bit more scattergun whilst um, they're still ki kind of coming together. Miles, what a match. What did you... <laughs> Just share, just share everything you're thinking right now. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the fact that I kind of, well, from a Sabalenka fan perspective, I don't enjoy how she kind of let that slip because she really had a, um, a a hand and a pinky on the finalist position in the second set, but she wobbled. And credit to Anz Jabor for taking advantage of that wobble and really really maneuvering Sabalenka around the court and yeah getting that W because it didn't look like she was going to be on the other side of that match holding uh, a finalist position at Wimbledon again so happy for her. I feel like it's a nice redemption arc if she can win the trophy um, especially with how everything happened for her losing Wimbledon and going on to lose another Grand Slam final of the U.S. Open last year it's good to see her kind of battle some of the demons that she had in general, and let alone in this match, going up against Sabalenka. So that was a really, really fun women's semifinal. Interesting. I mean, I would, I will agree with you that Sabalenka wobbled. We could see the unforced error count creeping up from set two onwards um, compared to what it was, um, and that was always the that's always the risk with Sabalenka's game. Mm -hmm. But I think Anshabur saw the saw the crack and decided to try and kick where the crack was and see what happens, and. She broke through. I, she I kicked honestly, the crack. She did. She did. Uh, she, she, she kicked. She kicked a lot of things today, um, <laughs> and uh, she. I, I, I like. I think her return game, and it's funny how often we've been saying this. This Wimbledon, the return was key in this match. Sabalenka's didn't get better as the match progressed. She Not really worse. gave away some freebies. Yeah, she, she gave away some freebies. In step three. I said a lot like Shaburb was lucky with some of those games weren't tighter. Yeah. Um, that was thrilling. I've, I was keeping my fingers crossed that we get one 
classic semifinal. And I don't think this one was a classic, like an instant classic, but it was definitely better than the first one. And I had said yesterday in my Twitter spaces that I was hopeful for a Von Drusova and Jabor final at Wimbledon because I feel like that would be a court craftiness dream. And we're getting it. So I'm excited. Yeah, I, I think for tennis purists, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, for those who, who like, uh, I don't know, that's probably a little bit of snobbery towards certain tennis fans. Um, hey. But Maybe <laughs> maybe some of the ones I've encountered on your Twitter spaces. But. <laughs> snobbery, snobbery and tennis kind of go hand in hand a little bit too often. So it's okay. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's going to be, um, yeah, it, it, it's going to be a, a match of lots of different, you, I don't think any shot's going to be the same because both, like you've got Von Drusha's loopy shots versus Jabert's flatter strokes, but yet mm-hmm. both are more than comfortable just, putting in some trickery to move their opponent around the court. Um, I I did have some thoughts um, I wanted to ask you about before we kind of talk about the second semi-final, the, the first semi-final, the other semi-final, they, <laughs> whatever, whatever that was that happened before this. Um, <laughs> um, and actually, uh, before we do that, I think there's some very important news is that like you've got some people wishing you happy birthday in the chat. Oh, thank you guys. I appreciate that. Yes, I am uh, the big 3-0 today. Oh, uh, let me know what it's like because I'll be following you next year. <laughs> You'll be following me. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'll let you know what the club feels like and kind of work my way around it and hopefully make it warmer for you because I'm a little scared myself. <laughs> uh, I'll be fine. I, I'm kind of going with I'm just going to spend another year of my 20s just living like a crazy person and then I'll settle down <laughs> when I'm 30. Hey. Um, Nothing's wrong with that. No. Um, but I made a comment earlier, and I wanted to know what you thought. Looking at her so far um, before the, the – throughout this tournament, throughout this run, is this the clutchest we've ever seen on Shibur throughout the whole tournament? Yes. Her run to – and her run to the final has included wins over Andrescu, Kvitova, Rabakina, and now Sabalenka, all four Grand Slam champions, all relatively recent Slam champions. The most dated, well, the most dated of them is Kvitova because she won her last one in 2014 and then Andrescu in 2019. But the other two have won uh, Grand Slams in the past year. So, and especially Rabakina being the defending champion in a rematch of the final. So, I think this is probably Anjabor's Anj best run uh, at a yeah. Grand Slam. And, you know, with a run like that, you want to see somebody holding the title and hoisting it. But Respect to Von Drusova as well, because she's had a really good run beating Kudermatova, a seated player, Donna Vekic, a seated player. Um, Svitolina wasn't seated, but she's been to the semifinals of Wimbledon before. And Pushkin, uh, Pagula, definitely Pagula. seated. Yeah, Pagula is the highest seed she's beaten, number four seed. So, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you want to talk about um, Von Drusova. Um, so <laughs> let's let's talk about the other semifinal. It was not as competitive as I thought it was going to be. Um, I just think it was because Vondrosheva didn't allow it to be competitive. She ran down everything. Again, it was another amazing return performance from the winner. Um, And she was moving Svitolina up to net, getting her out of position and passing her. And that was the strategy and it was working. And could she... And I I don't think Svitolina got a couple of good shots in, but she wasn't able to engage the kind of tennis that got her to the semifinals. That was my like She had kind of hit a wall, kind of, physically, you know? You think Svitolina ran out of gas? Yeah, I don't think... Her game style and just, like, how she naturally plays allows her to be a good retriever, I think, but her retrieving skills were just that little bit lower than what they should have been to kind of match up with where Von Drusova was today. So, yeah, I didn't expect that match to go the way that it did. But while I watched it, Von Drusov would just out trick Svitolina on a day where she was half a step slower than she should have been. And that's what happens. I, it was the second set was tighter because Von Drusova kind of woke up a little bit and kind of realized where she was at and what was happening. But yeah. 
too much of the match had gone by and the, the tide was too much on Von Drusova's side for Svitolina to really change it. I thought a comeback was on, but then the errors crept into Svitolina's game. Mm -hmm. um, the, and sort of Von, and, and sort of everything that Von Drusova was doing started bothering her again. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for the $5, Jane. Really, really appreciate Thanks any donation we get. Um, so, um, yeah, brilliant job. Um, ghost talk about you um <laughs> i will miss my 20s not all of the bad decisions i made for the most part but i will miss them i'll miss the uh, uh people say that you're like uh what is it your digestive system and all of that changes as you get older i'm gonna miss being able to eat as much spicy food as i can oh no i lost <laughs> mine about two years ago so um, i'm also I, I... i'm also a louisiana country boy so i don't think i'll be straying away too far from spicy food yeah um, so, um, absolutely, um, brilliant. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I think I can understand where you're coming from. And I wouldn't be surprised if Svitolina ran out of gas. I, I just think Vondrosheva played well enough to take advantage of that. And maybe if that match had played out how I thought, maybe Svitolina running low would affect it but I thought Von Trusheva would be running low as well I was convinced she was gassed after that Bushkova win just because how she was on court afterwards mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, her yeah. game doesn't strike me as very cool though like as much as she hovered the court something about her essence on the court doesn't scream like she's really exerting that much energy this is maybe because her game is built around so much angle and smoothness and ability to change the height of the ball that it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like she's really you know, spending or exerting as much energy in her legs as somebody like Jabor looks like she does, you know? Like Jabor is, can look seamless, but it just looks like it's a little bit more effortful. Whereas Marquetta, when she was in full stride, it doesn't look as effortful. Yeah. Um, well, um, let's talk a bit about Marquetta. So obviously we're talking about, it. is Marquetta von Drosheva kind of a forgotten force on the WTA tour? Because yep. <laughs> she kind of does these runs where, like, where did that come from? And my response is always, you know, she got to a Grand Slam final at 19, right? You know, she stormed to an Olympic silver medal on a protected ranking, mm -hmm. right? Like, this shouldn't be that much of a surprise that she's deep in a tournament. I did not call her reaching a Wimbledon final, but um, just because of the surface more than anything else, not so much her, but... Um, I believe ESPN why? reported that she had only won three or four uh, singles matches on the WTA Tour on grass altogether, and now she's won six at this one tournament. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think two of those came in Birmingham, but Berlin um, this yeah. year, like she the quarterfinals. And she had second. only picked up one main draw win at Wimbledon before this year. So, for, like, there was nothing really leading up to this level of play. But I believe once she got some of those victories over her belt, especially the one over Kudermatova, who is n not a slouch on grass, and then the win over Vekic, Bushkova, especially Pagula. I mean, she, it looks like she had her head down for most of the tournament and then looked up and was like, oh, wait, like, I'm playing well. I believe in myself. Why not go for another title? And she hasn't won a championship at WTA level since 2017. She's been to some finals, obviously the final of the Tokyo Olympics um, in 2021 that should have been played in 2020, but she's- French Open as well. Yes, yes, French Open final as well. She's kind of inexplicable because the time she's made big splashes, there was really no lead up or um, indication that she was going to do it. That's kind of the yeah. player she is so far. Uh, absolutely, I mean, like um, we've got on the screen, um, um, but yeah, um, I'm just looking up the uh, WTA titles uh, question, Ghibli. But I think it's not it's not many. It might only be one. Um, but is is it the fact that she's had a lot of injuries that's kind of maybe affected people's perce perception of her? But then Mukova keeps getting injured and gets hype whenever she plays. Um, is it mm -hmm. because maybe Vondrosha was far more based on court craft, maybe? I, I don't know what it is that that kind of makes her so forgettable when she really shouldn't be. I think Mukova's had the bigger wins in her career. And like the way she's won the matches, going back to the 
love the match at Roland Girls. That was it was a really supercharged and energy filled match because she had to come back and um, it was just dr more dramatic. Whereas Marquetta's a little bit more sneaky in the way she makes herself through the draw. Mark um, Muk Mukovas also beat Ash Barty when Ash Barty was pretty much at the height of her powers in 2021, I believe. And yeah, she she's had those moments where even though she plays intermittently because of injuries, unfortunately, when she has a splash, it's over a really big moment. And then Von Drusev is a little bit, um, like I said, sneaky. She's just inexplicable, you know? Um, great question from John. Uh, what do we call Anza Marquette if Irina Elena are big babe tennis? Um, thoughtful... I do, I do feel like both of them try to be very thoughtful in what they're in what they're doing on the court. Um, thoughtful tinkers? I don't know. Mm -hmm. they, they, I feel like they tinker with their opponents mid-match, and it really annoys the other opponent. I don't know. I have, I have to think about it. I don't, sorry I don't have anything more witty on the top of my yeah, head. It's like, I should. Uh, it's my birthday. I should be very witty today. Come on. <laughs> come on, brain. What, what, work. Do you, <laughs> what do you reckon about Kipley's question? Uh, will Ons be more nervous than Marquetta? Hans is, all, Hans is perpetually nervous to me. <laughs> she yeah. just, she works through it and I commend that so much and I appreciate that. Um, I, I think she's going to come out this one a lot better compared to her last two slam finals. I think she knows oh. how it is and she's going to come for it. Fingers crossed we get a, because I don't want to see either of them kind of just lose the plot because they played so well to get to the final. But if I'm, if I am considering who's going to be the most nervous, I actually think it might be Jabor just based off of what I've seen. Oh, it's going to have to be. Von Drescher for now, she's the underdog. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I think Jabor will be the most nervous to start with, but I think she's coming for this. Um, in the same way as Francis Tiafo at the uh, US Open a couple of years ago was, I'm coming for this. Didn't work out, but I liked his, um, I liked his attitude. <laughs> I did like his attitude. You just brought me back to that miserable third round performance he put in, but it's okay. That We're going to move forward. That was the intention, Miles. I know, Thank I know, I know. Thank <laughs> you for the uh, ten dollars, Ghost. Um, Thanks, Ghosty. Trying to contribute to apparently a tattoo that <laughs> you want. <laughs> I don't know why. I only have one tattoo currently in my life, and I've, I've been meaning to get another one for like five or six years. So that will I, will, I will appreciate that. I appreciate that monetary donation towards mm -hmm. the second tattoo of my life. <laughs> Ons and Marquetta could be playing cunning cat tennis, according to Gibby. Mm, cunning um, cat. But I feel like in order for it to be a direct opposition for Big Babe, it needs to be like, oh, it needs to be a variation of a healthy call for a woman you know yeah. like there's yeah. babe i don't know we have to think about that yeah probably um probably true um there's a lot of discussion over whether sabalenka lost it or um ons got it i think i still think ons got it i think ons just kept on pushing and pushing and pushing and see to see what she got i think sabalenka gave her the errors mm -hmm. and i think that's fair but i think that was the pressure ons was putting on I think Anz yeah, kept Sabalenka. herself. Yeah, I think Anz kept herself just close to Sabalenka enough for if a wobble were to happen, which it eventually did, she would be able to take advantage of it. So I, that's that's a way to win a match. Uh, Anz Jabor was just one step behind Sabalenka every moment until Sabalenka wobbled, and she just kind of you know sprinted ahead of her, which was fun to watch for sure. Um. Ghost is asking about what the unforced error tally in the Sabalenka match was. If I've actually got it in front of me, it ended up being 14 unforced errors for wow. Shibur, 45 for Sabalenka. I always feel like Wimbledon's a little bit... I don't want to say they pad the stats, but it's, it feels a little... Even though Sabalenka did have some very loose ground strokes, 45 seems like a little... Minutes. Yeah, 45 seems a little high. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 I look. No one's good on like tracking forced errors before. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, yeah. By the way, question from before about Von Drusheva. She has only won one WTA title, which was the first in the first final she played. That's again, how she made her big her big splash. Yeah, she was. It she was, was a teenager. Hardcore at BN beating Contivate in the final, and then she's lost the following four mm -hmm. um, in uh, Hungary, Istanbul. Roland Garros and the Tokyo Olympics. So she's looking to put that run for her to an end. Otherwise, that 
Records looking very Zachary-ish. Well, at least her trophy cabinet looks much shinier than Zachary's. They have, they have more actual moments of her winning as opposed to her being the runner-up. Wait, you mean Von Drusova's trophy cabinet or so- or uh, Sabalenka's trophy cabinet? Sorry. Von Drusova. Oh, yes. It is Zachary-esque. But, uh, yeah. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Although yeah, but there has been some conversation around does – you know, does Sabalenka have a semi-final problem? Because she's now one from five in major semis. And I don't think it's all semis like Zachary. Um, Zachary's only been to two Grand Slam semifinals. Um, but... Um, what do you think I, is worse, though? Because in all of Sabalenka's Grand Slam semis, they all went three sets. She all They all had her opportunities. Whereas in semi semifinal, she had a match point against Krychikova, and then another the semifinal against Raducanu, she just basically didn't show up for that match. I don't know which one is worse. I'm not sure if it's better to have had opportunities in a match and lose it, or to just kind of get beaten by the better player on the day and not really have a shot. So I'm not. I'm not. What do you think? Is it better to be close or to not have had a chance at all? Um, to be close, I'd yeah. say to be close. Um, because. Uh, you no, know, it's a bit like we were talking about Pagula earlier and her sort of seemed to be hitting a ceiling at quarterfinal levels because she's playing players who are peaking mm-hmm. um, and maybe have a slightly higher ceiling than she does, um, despite her having the higher ranking. Um, I would prefer to go, well, at least I was a couple of points away or something like that rather than... Yeah, I'm, as opposed to I'm, I just got my butt whipped. <laughs> a limit. My upper limit isn't this, whereas I could think my upper limit could be. Um, and... You know, Sabalenka did win a semi-final, and then she got a Grand Slam title out of it. Um, yeah. So she, there's no reason why not, but it's it's not a good stat for her right now. And and if you if you break down each one of those semi-final losses, it was the first one was a loss to Pliskova yeah, at three. 2021 Wimbledon semifinals in three. Second one was to Fernandez. Fernandez. That one definitely sticks out because she definitely had opportunities in that one. Then again at the U.S. Open. Um, yeah. Again at the U.S. Open to Swiatek. The Mukherjee French Open that just passed, yeah, and then now Ange Jabour in three. So it's 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 a trend. It's a trend there. It's not a bad trend to have, but I would imagine this one's going to sting because one, a Wimbledon title was on the line, or a Wimbledon final rather was on the yeah. line, and so was the number one, one ranking. One. Yeah, Fiontech will keep for a little bit longer. I think not for much longer. I think she'll lose it after the US Open, if not before. Um, Depending on how Sabalenka does in the hard in the uh, warm ups, um, well, she gets asked a question about Van Drusseva that I can't answer. <laughs> um, um, well, which one? He, he's asked two questions, um, but this one, my answer to this question is: it's not an emergence. She was already there. We just weren't paying attention to her. I still can't call whether this means anything yet. She yeah. she's just that inexplicable. Any other time I've tried to think about her, like her really taking this result and moving upon it and getting into the top 10 because her highest ranking is 14, I believe. So yes. she still has, you know, upper she'll, upper she's ranks gonna to, be, to climb. She's going to be 16 minimum. After this now. run. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, and Ghosty also asks, is she a threat at the U.S. Open? I, I don't know. I, she's she a, anyone's a threat at the U.S. <laughs> Open. Right? Von Drusseva could win it could get to the semis or lose first or second round. Like, that's how much of a variance the results have been in her career. I have a question of my own that I want to pose to you, going back to Ange Chabur. Okay. If Ange Chabur wins Wimbledon, and it's an if still, because Marquette von Drushchever has been putting in some amazing performances, Mm -hmm. do we need to be expanding the top of the WTA to a WTA big four? To include Jabur? Yes. Not yet. Not yet. She's she's knocking on the door and to steal another um, platform's popular phrase, uh, she's in the mix. I think I feel like that's a really healthy way to put it. But I don't think she's she can be considered a part of the big four just yet. She's right outside the door. Like you know, if there's a screen door, she's looking directly in it. Yeah, I would put her if she won it. I'd put her halfway in the door. Okay. Um, I think she needs to win another. I, I agree with your assessment. I think she probably needs to get to another big final. I would allow a thousand, a one thousand final, um, as counting. Um, but I think 
this performance kind of puts her in the mix. Well, she was already kind of in the mix of people looking through the window because you could also expand it to include players like Krajikova um, mm. as well. Um, mm-hmm. Garcia at one point, but not so much now. Um, and uh, maybe, you know, if a fit and healthy carry in a muck of her. And I, I would love all of those players in the top 10 I, I simultaneously. Mukova could make it. Kvitova mm-hmm. as well. Um mm-hmm. On a fast court, not I think only when it's fast court conditions. But yeah, um, so I, I would say she's slightly closer. I would say close to you, but I, yeah, I'd say we we I'd be going to give her a top three point five. But I need her to get into another, just one more big final in a thousand levels, something like that, to really go. Okay, now it's a big four for Jabor to get to another final at a like, thousand. It wouldn't necessarily last long. It would probably only last for a few weeks. And I want her to win it. I want her to win Wimbledon. And yeah. if she wins one of the lead ups to actually, it's, I think it's a domino effect. If she wins Wimbledon, not trying to put extra pressure on her, but hey, we're analysts analyzing what they give us. Yes. If she wins Wimbledon, awesome. Definitely moves her forward. If she does well and or wins at one of the lead ups to the US Open, moves her forward. If she does well and wins, or if she does well and or wins at the U.S. Open, then I feel like it's healthy to put her in the Big Four conversation. Um, yeah. We we have I guess have to see a little bit more extended excellence, and so mm-hmm. far her excellence has been patchy. It's when it's been great, it's been great, but it also has been patchy just in the the first seven months of the season alone. And how could it not be? She had a whole knee surgery for uh, a, a month that took her off of the Middle East swing, so she's kind of just been recovering from that. And we've seen the bits and the, the uh, fits and starts of how you come back from a surgery. You know? Yeah, she's done well. She's yeah. um yeah, and and she we know she was kind of in it, and uh, yeah, slow start to the year. But she's shown that she, yeah, she's in the mix. And like, it's funny because like I've been looking ahead already and like starting to put predictions, things together for the US Open because obviously Wimbledon's going to influence that. And I keep looking at this going, Hans is scoring really low for someone who got to the final last year. Mm. Um, I think that's going to change um, over the next couple of weeks. But yeah, and maybe how it goes tomorrow, not tomorrow, Saturday. Tomorrow's the men's semifinals. Mm. Um, that could be exciting too. Two yeah. really good prospects for those. So, yeah, a fun um, Wimbledon, a fun shape up of a Wimbledon. I would say. I think we said on a previous uh, uh, thread that this has been our favorite of the decade so far, and it still stands for me. Yeah, um, yeah, I would say so. I think this is a uh, been an absolutely fabulous Wimbledon. Um, definitely on the women's side. Um, so. But let's just talk about Saturday because it's the women's final. Um, do how do you? Okay, we thought that these two semi-finals will play out a certain way, mm-hmm. and they didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and they didn't because I thought Svitolina um, von Drusha would be Svitolina in three. And I thought Sabalenka Shabur, I thought would be close. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't actually willing to, like when I was pushed on calling it, I went for Sabalenka, but I wasn't super comfortable. I would have done the same thing. Yeah. But like I think you said in my my Twitter mentions or to the Mm -hmm. response of the graphic I put out, your gut was wanted, your gut wanted uh, Jabor, but your head was. was... Like my head was telling me Sabalenka should Mm -hmm. win this on paper. My gut's telling me there's something special happening with Shabur right now. Yeah. Um, so as much as we can analyze, how do we think this final is going to play out knowing we don't have a great track record of predicting things at this latter stage of Wimbledon? Because we got pretty good. <laughs> like I I did really like I predicted three out of four, uh, three out of the eight um, quarterfinals pre-tournament. I was talking um, like about, oh, this could be the first tournament in years that we have the top four seeds locking out the semifinals because I was convinced. And then two of, the <laughs> no, two of the four lost. No, three of the four lost. lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three of the four lost. And then mm-hmm. Sabalenka didn't make it either to the final. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like this is what I'm saying. Like, you know, take everything we're doing with a pinch of salt. I've completely lost confidence in my ability to analyze anything or maybe more, <laughs> more it's tennis continuing to surprise me. Mm. 
how do we think on paper this final should play out? If I'm taking into consideration the past several Wimbledons that I've really been invested in the final ladies championship, they haven't gone my way. And I know that they haven't gone my way because Wimbledon always falls on my birthday. And I'm, I have been left disappointed in the past couple of Wimbledons because it just was like a deflated moment where all of your favorites get to the precipice of Wimbledon championship and they don't win it. I.e. Federer in 2019, Serena in 2018, 2019, Venus in 2017. So if I'm, if, if, if that trend unfortunately keeps going, the person I'd like to see lifting the trophy, which is Anj Jabor won't be, um, mm. I wouldn't be upset at Von Drusseva winning, obviously, because she's had a magnificent run. I just think for the narrative here that women's tennis is starting to shape up and have a really firm upper echelon of talent and have a firm top three, top four, I think Jabor winning helps solidify and push that narrative even further. Whereas if Von Drusseva wins, it'll feel like at the number 42 player that she is, ranked in the world right now it'll kind of feel like the narrative of the field being super open and it's anybody else it's anybody's game to win mm -hmm. will kind of still perpetuate in women's tennis so this is a this is a really crucial moment to see which way i believe um tennis is going to move forward especially on the wta because i really do think obviously like everyone plays to get to these moments so if von drusseva wins i feel like that gives all the players ranked 30 and below even if they haven't, if, if, even if they've have have been to a final or not, that gives them added belief that they can do it. Whereas if Jabor does it, having knocked on the having knocked on the door and been a more consistent top five player, I feel like that, like I said, makes it feel like there's a little bit of more gatekeeping at the top and for the for the winners of these big trophies. So I think I want to lean more towards the gatekeeping than I do towards anyone in the top fifty or so who can potentially win a Grand Slam. I I, I like the I like more of the gatekeeping where there's mm. on the women's side because we haven't had it in a while. So I'm leaning for Jabor, but I also see the excitement that would obviously be Von Drusseva winning. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's an interesting perspective on it, sort of how we would prefer it to go. And I agree with you. And I think it would be good for women's tennis to have that little bit more consistency in, in, in I mean, it's, obviously we're going to have a first time major champion mm -hmm. um, regardless. We're going to have a first time Wimbledon champion regardless. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, yeah, Von Trusheva, under any other circumstances, would be the player I'd be rooting for mm. um, because it's on Shabur, because of the heartbreak, because it's Wimbledon, and because of what she's done on this run. I feel like it'd be a massive anticlimax if she didn't do it. And um, I think Shabur winning this title... Um, yeah, and, and having that fourth name in the mix, it, it's, it, yeah, I, I would definitely prefer that. And that's how I think, I still think that's how it's going to go. I still think there's a story brewing here. I um, hope so. That would be, I think Ons is coming for this. She's coming hey, for that trophy. I would love to see. That would make a birthday week uh, capped off nicely, I think. I, I think Hanya would want to see it more. <laughs> um, um, and by the way, I think you, no, you didn't predict Gilberto with the tournament, did you? You went with... I went with Sabalenka, actually. I'm Sabalenka. not sure how far I had Jabor going. I'm not sure. Semis. Semis. So, uh, yeah, in the predictions league, you, Hanya, and Mario were the only three to put Jabor in the semis. Okay. And Hanya and Mario predicted Jabor to win the title. Who did I? Oh, I had Coco winning the title, or at least in the final. No, no. yeah, I had Sabalenka winning and Coco in the final. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Coco wasn't a bad call. Sophia Kennan just happened. Yeah. Yeah. Not um, a bad call. Not a bad call. Okay. So that's how we see. Okay. So we're basically, no offense, Marquette von Drosheva. We are rooting for Anders Jabeur. But if you do win, then, you know, it's no hard feelings. We'll clap for you. Yeah. Like, you know, it'll it'll get it'll get the silver medalist tag off your neck <laughs> wimbledon champion yeah that's a big difference being uh announced onto a court as 2023 wimbledon champion as opposed to 2020 olympic silver medalist both are nice 
accolades to have, but one is definitely brighter than the other. I mean, I mean, not only, um, I mean, not only that, I was also thinking like the French Open runner-up, like perennial runner-up, essentially. Mm. And that was not a memorable match, by the way. I, when I bring it up, some people are like, well, who did Ash Barty beat? Ash Barty has a French Open title? It Even to the most but, like seasoned tennis fan, they kind of forget that one even happened. So I, hopefully... have n- I never saw that match. I, I don't remember <laughs> why I didn't see that match. Um, it wasn't because I was skipping it. I don't think I was actually... Something must have happened that I couldn't watch it. Um, because I definitely didn't miss much. The Dow versus much. team. No, from from the score. Either that or I did watch it and I blanked the match from my mind. Um, Not a I bad remember, call again. <laughs> I remember Joe Con. Everyone's expecting Joe Conta to make that final. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure a Barty Conta final would be much better, to be honest. But um, hey. Um, all right. Well, uh, we are at this point. Um, it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, well, thanks everyone for joining. Thanks Miles for coming on and sharing your thoughts on those matches. Um, are there anything? Is there anything that you want to say to to wrap up your thoughts on today? I am just keeping my fingers crossed for a crafty and competitive women's singles final. I hope that that energy goes over to the men's final. And if we're breaking ground with somebody like Jabor winning Wimbledon and what that means to the uh, people that are, that look up to her and are inspired by her mission and what she's doing for um, African and Arab people. I hope we get something that kind of matches that on the men's side too, with a new Wimbledon champion and like a breath of fresh air amongst the grand slam. So keeping my fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say myself too. Thank you for coming on, Miles, um, and sharing your thoughts. And um, thank you, everyone who's still with us. Thank you for those who joined for uh, this commentary. This was a lot of fun today. Um, one of my favorite matches I've ever commentated on. Um, and um, I hope that you enjoy the men's semifinals tomorrow. Um, I've forgotten who's doing them, but uh, you know it's going to be good quality. Um regardless and um i hope that you will tune back in and join us to watch the women's final um i will not be able to watch it um with you but i will be um watching but i will definitely be keeping um an eye on it from uh, where i am uh but i just want to say thank you all for joining uh it's been a blast keep talking tennis bye guys If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.